everyone has been asking, so I decided I would just make a video on how I make and use my laminated inventory card system. So that's what we're gonna do today. I'm gonna show you guys step by step how to make these, the numbering system that I use, and how I actually implement this in my eBay store to make storing inventory really easy and efficient and so I never have half empty bins. So the very first thing you need to do is come up with a numbering system for all of your items. I use the alphabet A through Z and I sell primarily pants and jeans. So for jeans, I do have them all broken up by size, same thing with pants. So A is my jean sizes zero to four, this goes all the way back to H, and H is sizes 18 plus. I is my premium and vanity size jeans, so everything that doesn't fit into that standard sizing in that first column here goes with an I tag. Now, I don't sell as many tops, blazers, skirts, and dresses, so all of those are lumped together regardless of size. So S is my dresses, T is shorts and skirts, U is shirts, sweaters, and cardigans. V is blazers. And W is jackets and outerwear. I do keep those bulkier items separate because I can only fit 10 of those items in one of my bins. Whereas the U items, those are shirts, and I can fit 20 in one bin. So that is something you'll need to think about is the size of these items because you want to be able to have the same number in each bin. So something bulky like a winter coat I can't fit 20 of those in one bin, like with the lightweight shirts that have a U tag. So think about that, um, the sizing of the items and how, you, how many you want stored in each bin and make sure you sort it in a way that is logical for the size. The next thing you'll need to do is actually make your inventory tags. So here's some that I made for K, which is pants sizes five, six, and seven. There is 18 here on a page. I did three across by six down, and that fits perfectly in these little trays that I have here. Obviously, you could do something different if you want them a little bit bigger or smaller. I'm gonna show you, though, how I actually make these in Microsoft Word, and you guys can do the same thing, or if there's something different you wanna make, feel free to do that. Okay, so if you're in Word and you want to make some basic labels, you can click on Mailing, go to Labels over here, hit options and then you're going to hit new label and then change your label height to 1.83 the label width to 2.83 number across is three number down is six do okay oops okay and then new document so that's going to give you enough labels to fill an entire page like I have. And now what you can do is you can actually fill in all of these borders right here. Click this button and then just do all borders. And then you'll give you some grid lines on here. Now for the numbering, to make it super easy, if you click on numbering up here and hit define new number format, I, for number style, I use this one. It has three digits. So there's 001, 002, 003. And then for number format, if you wanted to start with A, B, C, D, E, whatever. So if you want to start with A, you just put an A there. And then this shows you what it's going to look like. And it's going to pre-number the entire document for you like this. Now, obviously, you can change the sizing. That's a little bit too big. Oops, hold on. Yeah, that's an 80 font, so change it to 60, and that's a lot smaller. Now, if you want, you can add in some text on here. So maybe you want it to say pants, sizes zero to four. Whatever you want, you can also put that on here. But that is how you can make an entire page of labels and get them automatically numbered so that you don't have to do it individually. Now let's go over some of the supplies that you're gonna need. You can use plain white paper if you don't want them color coordinated, but if you do, which I highly recommend, you can get an entire package of this Astro Bright's colored paper for 10 bucks on Amazon, and it has 25 colors in it. So if you're gonna use the alphabet, you can pretty much get through the entire thing with just one package of paper here and have a different color for each of your tags like I have in here. 
Now, you're also going to need a laminator. These are actually pretty affordable. This one is by Scotch, and this was 30 bucks on Amazon, and this will last me forever. The laminating pouches, these are from Amazon as well. These will fit the 8.5 by 11 inch pieces of paper. There's 100 in here, and that was about 10 bucks. And you can use this for other things too. It doesn't just have to be for these laminated cards. And on top of that, these are gonna last you for a really long time. So you might as well just invest in the supplies now to make them and you can continue to use them and make more as you grow your business. This is kind of optional, but I do like to have it. It is a paper cutter. I use these for my product information cards as well, but it makes it really easy to cut these out and have nice straight seams. Because of the amount that I made, this was a good investment for me because cutting out all of these after they're laminated and thick and I wanted to make sure I had nice straight lines so that they would fit easily into my bins, you might as well just get a cheap paper cutter. I think this was 30 bucks. It's by Swing Line. It works great. Um, you could probably get a, one cheaper somewhere else, but this is what I'm using. Okay, let's talk about storage really quick. I do have these really nice plastic shelf bins with a straight wall. These are about $10 a piece. It is kind of expensive, but they do work really well. It's 23 inches long, eight inches wide by six inches high. So I can fit five of these across on my metal wire racks, no problem. Now, I do have a cheaper option, which I've been using upstairs for my shirts. Just these cardboard boxes. These are 20 inches long, eight inches wide by eight inches high, and they're less than two bucks a piece, and they work just fine. If you wanted, you could wrap these with some colored contact paper if you want to have a more kind of like high-end look. One more thing that I do want to talk about is when you tape on these tags, you don't want to use really cheap, junky tape. And that is because it will leave a sticky residue on your tag when you go to pull it off. I recommend just getting some better quality tape like scotch because it will peel off easily and it won't leave that nasty residue on there. Now I know you're wondering, how do you actually use this inventory system? It's simple. When you go to list an item, you're gonna to go to your available slots right here, pull out the card, and this number is going to go in your custom SKU field on eBay. Now if you're selling on a different platform, you will need to find a place to put this number. When you print out your orders awaiting shipment list on eBay, it will actually print out with your custom SKU on there. So you can use this as a pick list when you go to your bins to pull your items. So you'll use this, go to the bin, pull out the items that sold, and then when you go to ship them, you're just gonna pull off this inventory number here, pull off the piece of tape, and it's gonna go back in your tray here of available slots. So you're gonna reuse these numbers over and over again, and this way you never have empty bins because you're always reusing those numbers. It's that simple. And that's it, you guys. That's how I do my reusable numbered inventory system. I'll put a link in the description down below for all of the different items that I'm using. If you have any questions, leave a comment. Thank you for watching. One last thing, you guys. I wanted to show you my wire racks that I use for the storage. These are six tiers high, and I can fit five of these bins across. Now, if you get the straight wall bins like I have, you can really maximize the space. If you have those slanted wall ones, you can't fit as many um, of your bins on here. 